Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to go over the ultimatum game, and we're going to frame it like this. Two kids, we'll call them Angelica and Tommy, are trying to split a dozen cookies. Tommy's parents made the following rules. Angelica will make an ultimatum or a take it or leave it offer to Tommy. If Tommy accepts, then he gets that number of cookies, and Angelica gets the rest. If Tommy rejects it, however, then both get nothing. Each child's sole desire here is to maximize their cookie consumption. So the game starts with Angelica offering some number between 0 and 12. Tommy can then either accept or reject that offer. Let's note a couple of things here. First, you might be wondering what that curly line underneath Angelica means. Well, the 0 on the left represents that's the smallest number she can choose. The 12 on the right represents that's the largest number that she can choose. And the arc in between the two choices represents the fact that this is a range of choices so that she can choose any value between the 0 and the 12. And the x is our shorthand for what that offer actually ends up being. The other thing worth mentioning here is that this is the first time we've encountered an endogenous variable. Basically, our goal for this game is to solve Angelica's equilibrium offer x. If we do that, then we're done. And to solve this game, we start the same way we've always done by beginning at the bottom. We can see here that Tommy would only have incentive to accept an offer that gives him more than zero cookies since he can always reject and secure a payoff of 0. That means he would accept an offer of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12 cookies. Now Angelica has to figure out what she would offer. We can easily see that demanding to keep all 12 cookies is an ineffective strategy. Tommy would get nothing and reject that offer. But what if she demanded 11 and left Tommy with 1? Now Tommy has an incentive to accept her proposal. Rejecting it would net him one less cookie. Finally, we need to check to see if Angelica has any incentive to deviate from this strategy. Could she do better by demanding 10 cookies? Well, here Tommy is still going to accept 2 is greater than 0. But Angelica only gets 10 here, which is strictly worse than what she did before. Thus, this isn't a profitable deviation. And in equilibrium, Angelica offers Tommy just one cookie, Tommy accepts, and Angelica gets 11. This might seem unfair for Tommy, and you're right, it is. But that just shows you how advantageous it is to be the one calling the equilibriums. However, later on we'll introduce something called Rubenstein bargaining, which coincidentally has this element of fairness. But that is for another lecture.